we're living in a season that we must know the voice of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit. I don't believe in happenstance. I believe in the Holy Spirit. You've got to divinely walk in the Spirit of God if you want to be effective in this work. The compassion of God that changes people's lives. The love. When I was asking the Holy Spirit today, uh, what did he have for you? He said, let my word speak for itself. And then he began to give me some scriptures. One he just uh, had me to say, to look up. It'd be John 14, verse 26. But the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place. This is Jesus. He's teaching the disciples about Holy Spirit. He knows Holy Spirit's about to be given. He's gonna, he, he started out this chapter telling them, I'm praying and asking Father to send you Holy Spirit. Therefore, Holy Spirit is given. Because Jesus believed that every prayer he prayed is answered. Not will be, but is answered. When you pray, you should not say, my prayer's going to be answered. Your prayer is answered. And he calls the Holy Spirit his representative. I love that. Our Father will send in my name, in my place, my representative. He will represent me and he will act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall. Everybody's talking about memory loss with this thing that's been going on. I'm like, if you have the Holy Spirit, nothing shall by any means harm you. The scripture says in the last chapter of Mark that if you drink anything deadly, it won't harm you. So regardless of what you did or didn't do, you have scripture to defend yourself. So here he says, he's my representative. He is going to teach you. The Holy Spirit is the great teacher. He will teach you all things. He will cause you to recall what you can't remember. Wow. He will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything that I've told you. And Jesus is the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So when you read the word, don't worry about that. You can't remember it. Holy spirit will cause you to recall it. It is not your ability to memorize. It is your ability to allow Holy spirit to live within you, always bringing about his acts, his manifestations. Skip over to Galatians uh, chapter five, the Lord put this in my spirit this morning for you. So I'm letting the spirit of God teach Rev, uh, Genesis, uh, Galatians five, verse 25. If we live by the Holy spirit, if we live by the Holy spirit, I think I'll just say that again. If we live by the Holy spirit, there's two other ways you can live. You can live by the flesh. If you read the whole chapter, you could see that. Or you can live by the soul, which is your mind, your intellect, your will, making your own choices. You can live by that, your thinking, your ability to make decisions, your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's really the one soul realm that most people live by, how I feel. You can live by that one. You can live by the flesh or you can live by the Holy Spirit. So you just choose. I said this this weekend. I'd never said it before uh, that you are like a car. You, you're, you decide who's driving. There's a front seat, there's a back seat, and there's a trunk. The Spirit of God, the Spirit indwelling your spirit, that's who should be driving. Most people's soul drives. Some people's flesh drives. But the spirit of God living inside of your spirit wants to drive, which means you can put your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions, how you feel. That can ride in the car, but it has to be in the back seat. And your flesh has to be in the trunk. 
If you keep your flesh in the trunk and your soul in the back seat, your life will be wonderful. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. You say you're filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit indwells you. He says, then, if that's so, let us also walk by the Spirit. That means all day long, every day, every action that you make, we are in the Spirit. People, if you live by your soul realm, by your feelings, the only time you think you're in the Spirit is when you feel Him. Now, I got to interrupt you right there because what I just said to you earlier, which she didn't know I was going to tell that story, Mm -mm. is that I could have walked many different paths that day. I could have gone been many different roads. That's right. And and the the avenue I took that morning was not the avenue that I normally take. I went around a whole different way. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you when you're when you're led by the Spirit, a lot of other people walk past that envelope. A lot of other people saw that envelope. But when the Spirit leads you and you are aware that he is leading you in your walk, the Bible says, though I walk with him, I talk with him, and he shows me that he is my God, I'm right there. It it didn't happen to everybody else. That was for me. When you walk by the Spirit, one of our spiritual mentors, you say miracles are either coming at you or going by you every day. You decide. But it's up to you to grab your miracle, to catch your miracle. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward, not backward. Let us go forward walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. Our conduct controlled by the Spirit. Now, if you're like me, I immediately start thinking about my conduct. And it should be by the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit within me is driving, then my flesh is in the trunk and my conduct aligns in the flesh. My soul realm is in the back seat. My conduct, I'm not moved by my feelings. I don't get offended and leave the church all the time because somebody hurt my feelings. Uh Uh-uh. No, because that's in the back seat. My spirit man is controlled by the Holy Spirit. He's representing Jesus and training me, teaching me, allowing me to move only forward. Did you notice that in the scripture? Only forward do you go. Now flip over to Romans 8. I love Romans 8 too. This particular uh, verse is... The Lord pointed them out to me this morning. And so I just want to read just what he said. We'll start in verse 13. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. Keep it in the trunk. Romans 8 what? Romans 8 verse 13. Okay. But, you know that conjunction but, you know what that means. Everything I just said is irrelevant if what I said after the but you live by. So the flesh will have nothing to do with you if you do this. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body. You can't trust that thing. You better keep it in the trunk. You shall really and genuinely live forever. This is why I I say this so often, that if you are truly born again, walking in the spirit of God, you will never experience death. And the reason I say that is because you're already eternal. You're not going to have to die to become eternal. When you're born again, you're eternal. There will be a point, if the rapture doesn't come first, there will be a point where he says, come, and I'll just shed my flesh like I took off my coat. But I won't experience death because I already have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me, and he's not going to die again. Now, I didn't know this is where you were going this morning. I have no idea where you were going this morning. 
And if I'd have done that to you, you'd have said, where are you going? I this gave morning? you the well, scripture. You should have read them. <laughs> there, there are times when I'm sitting in service and I'll lean over to us. I think we need to change our message. You go, really? Really? <laughs> We're 10 minutes before service. And I'm like, OK, so I know why you're going. And I know I was led to tell this story because my think about that. When I said I found six hundred dollars, how many of you rejoiced and said he found six hundred dollars? Because your flesh says, I found $600. But your spirit says, that's somebody else's money. What are you going to do with it? But then you say, if I give it to the, do the right thing, I give it to somebody else. When I, and, and when I got it back, I gave it away. God's going to bless me. No, God started to bless me when I gave the money back. To the security man. To the, and my faith was, if I'm supposed to have it back, I will. But if not, my God will meet all all my I needs need according to his needs. riches and glory. My, my, my manifestation of the seed didn't start when I gave the seed away. My manifestation of the seed met, began to manifest when I did the right thing by the spirit, not by the flesh. Verse 14, for all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship. Wow. In the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Daddy. This is my father. The Spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. And verse 17, and if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his, and you mentioned this earlier, inheritance with him, only we must share his suffering if we are to share his Glory, glory rising. Woo -woo. But what of that? I love that. Now, here's what I want you to grasp from this. When you walk in the Spirit, and, and I've been filled with the Holy Spirit since I was 17. I'm now 66. I don't know if you can figure that out, but that's 49 years. So I'm almost 50 years God's number for Holy Spirit. I am almost 50 years walking with the Holy Spirit. And, and what I want to talk and close with today, if you want to, is how if you're not careful, you can get so comfortable with the Spirit of God in you that you don't always pray anymore. You assume. An assumption is wrong even when you assume you know what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. It's a very dangerous place. And Harry and I had a big lesson, and I take full oh. responsibility <laughs> for it <laughs> because I assumed I knew what the Holy Spirit wanted us to do in January. The word is complacency. Mm. We got complacent with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Take him for granted. <clears throat> Which means you have it, but you don't understand you still are using it. And so therefore you kind of put it on the shelf and you forget about it. And so therefore you only go and get it when you find yourself in dire need instead of getting it before you get in need. You understand where I'm going there? We were invited to do a television program in Texas so I could give my testimony. And then... Her mama has been having some health issues, and she's in Mississippi. And we had friends in Arkansas that wanted to see us. We had friends in Arizona that wanted us to come and minister. And I hadn't been out a lot. And so I said to mama, I said, mama, why don't we drive? And, uh, and she said, you, you, we get on an airplane and be there in four hours. I said, but you know, you and I haven't done anything. We haven't gone a lot of places. Why don't we just get in the car and you and I have a little bit. We'll go see the countryside and, you know, and, 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 and let's drive. So she said, okay, if you feel that's what we're supposed to do. I said, well, I just would like to do it. Now, see, so that went, was my first mistake. I should have prayed right then, but I didn't pray. I just assumed. And let me interpret that. I listened to him instead of the Holy <laughs> Spirit. Okay. That's what she's saying. Okay, ladies. I know lady talk. Okay. Uh, I don't need to be in tongues to interpret that. That's lady talk. I listen to the moron instead of the man. 
And so I did what I was supposed to do in the flesh. I took the car down to the place and I had them check it all out, everything else. And they saw the car's good to go. And so we got in the car, we went to Arizona, we ministered and that morning came out and the car wouldn't start. And the car always starts. And I'd had it's the battery never checked. not started. So long story short, they brought jumper cables, they jumped it off and one of us probably left the door open, I'm not sure, but um, it's gonna be my fault at the end of this story. I just want you to know, so buckle your seatbelts, gentlemen. Okay, so, <clears throat> so we... Th 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 so the car wouldn't start and everybody say sign number one. We started to go across the, 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 the countryside. We saw some beautiful things. We saw elk, we saw deer, it would be, but it began to spit snow. And I looked at the thermometer on the car and it said nine degrees outside. And we're driving into this town about midnight. And I said, honey, the weather's starting to turn on us and it's getting cold. We, you know, and she said, we better spend the night. We were in Amarillo, Texas, and it was already two o'clock in the morning by then. Uh, uh, times it, still are coming to me. At, so, <laughs> So well, I was, run in the, the hotel, changed. we get a hotel room, and, and I park the car where, just in case the battery didn't start the next morning, that we could jump it off. And so we went inside, we, had, we spent the night, got five or six hours of sleep, came out the next morning, it was nine degrees. Nine degrees outside. And we hadn't planned for nine snow. degrees. We came from Southern California, and it was starting to spit sleet and starting snow. to spit snow, and the clouds were dark. And so I went, and the car started right up. Well, thank God, you know? because somebody left the door open, but thank God. And so we got, I, I pull up to the front of the car, I turn the seat warmers on, you know, you have little bun warmers in the car so the queen could get in a warm car. And she didn't experience nine degrees, I experienced nine degrees. And so we it's get- It's your road trip. So we pull, we, we pull out of the driveway of that little hotel and all of a sudden the dashboard went right red and it said tire failure, tire failure. And the tire pressure started to drop down. And I said, oh Lord, but it's so cold out, maybe the, the tire uh, needs air in it. So I went to a tire, you know those little air pump things, the gas station, I put my 50 cents in and there was no nozzle. <laughs> I'd like to know why people do that. I go to another one, I put my 50 cents in, there's no hose. I'd like to know why people do that. So I said, Mama, I'm not putting no more dollars in these things. So we went to a truck stop. And I, I don't know how to explain it because of time, but went in and they gave me, I left my driver's license, they gave me this big thing about this big and it was a nozzle. And I said, well, what am I supposed to do? I said, well, it, it, it's what we air up the big truck tires with. He said, just pull over there, put it on. So I did, and I mean, 10 seconds, it, shh, it that tire blew right up. <laughs> 42 pounds. And Cheryl said, well, if one of them you needs it, you better put in it in other. all of them. We're like the Flintstones riding around on rocks. <laughs> So we pulled down the road and we get about an hour, hour and a half and the front end of the car started to, to shimmy a little bit. Next thing you know, the tire blew out. Completely I mean, it blew out. Blew. Boom. And these, are, these tires only have 1,000, 1,500 miles on them. We haven't driven much in years. And so I pull off the side of the road and my mom said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I got to get out and change the tire. Nine degrees. It's still nine degrees and now it's really sleeping. Our trunk of our car really is snowing. full. I want everybody our, to say sign number two. It's all full of product, all our books, our tapes, and our suitcases. And then we have gifts for her family because we hadn't seen them for two years for Christmas and the back seat was full. Just all honesty, we look like the Clampets. So, for the older people, that used to be a television program. For you younger people, you don't have a clue what it's talking about. But we were a sight. Anyways. I'm hauling all this stuff out of the trunk on the side of the road and big trucks are going by and it's windy and it's cold and it's nine degrees. And finally I, I get the jack out and I slide it under the side of it and I would like to meet the human being who decided to make a jack that does like this and when the tire is flat, your knuckles hit the ground every time you turn in that circle. You used to do this, right? I want this, this is not for me. So I finally got the thing cranked up. I loosened all the nuts on it and everything else. I can't get the tire off. Now it I'm in the car, by the way, and I took out the manual to read him the directions. Ladies, please. <laughs> We're dumb enough as it is to start the trip, but I don't need you reading me. Get the jack out of the car. <laughs> oh no, the first direction so, was- up. The first direction was everyone exit the vehicle. I'm like, not. She's, I'm not getting out of this car. 
I said, no, keep that seat warmer on. It's nine degrees out here. You're warm as toast in there. I wonder if she didn't make me take my shirt off to cover her up. <laughs> and so I said, huh. Oh, I got in there. I started kicking the thing. So I get in the car. She says, I it says. I don't kick the tire. Too late. <laughs> You're behind. I mean, I. And so she called a friend of mine. He said, listen, the lug nuts might be frozen on there or melted on there or heated on there or something. He said, put the lug nuts back on, lower the tire down a little bit, make it loose, and then go forward, slam the brakes, go backwards and slam the brakes. I said, Harry said now this friend joking, of mine right? is a jokester. <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding me. I, you got to be He's playing he a joke do, on He us. said do it. So I, because she told me. I, well, for, sure enough, that thing <laughs> snapped. So I cranked that thing back up. Finally, I look in the trunk, and there's a pair of gloves that they give you <laughs> to use for the tires. Have you ever seen those? All right. They look like pantyhose. <laughs> They're not, They're not going to keep you warm. They're not going to keep. So I got these pantyhose on my hand. I crank it back up, get everything off. Pull the tire off. I got a. Uh, 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 I have limited minutes, lung capacity. He had to get capacity. back in the car because it was cold. I, I, when it's cold, my lungs is really hot. So I'm nine degrees. I'm huffing and I'm puffing. And finally, I get this 80 or 90 pound tire off of it. And then they give you that little bitty <laughs> donut. <laughs> little donut. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So I get it on, <clears throat> I put it on there, I put all the nuts, I cranked it all down, I threw the tire in the back, I was loading all the stuff back in. I get in the car, I really, f I'm a man. <laughs> I've done what my, do I've taken care it of my fair megadon, you know? Hour and a half I've rescued later, her from the side of the road. It was an hour and a half later, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> we the general consensus it. is, I got the tire on. Okay, amen. Thank you, man. Now, I just want you to notice nobody's prayed yet. We start we off assume down the road. We're on a journey, we we're doing the, the Lord's work. Start drive down the road. We didn't get 100 yards. That tire blew out. It also just boom. came apart. And I thought about it. So, some of them you have to put air in them, but I didn't have that in my back of my car. And, and she said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to drive this thing well, we couldn't until that get wheel off falls now. off. There was, no, what, there was no shoulder. So you, we had to drive on the rim. I said, I am not rim. getting out in nine degree weather again. So I'm going to drive this thing until that thing won't roll no more. And <laughs> well, we're going down the road and it's starting miles. to clump, 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 clump. Just about three miles. It would not roll anymore. We finally <laughs> pulled off the side of the road and there's a shack. That's all I can tell you is a shack. And I'm trying to watch my time real quick. And on the front of it, somebody had spray-painted tires. <laughs> That's true. And Along like, with a thousand other graffitis, but tires was in there. Cheryl says, this is God. I said, this is a dump. She says, this is I God. Said, this is God. <laughs> so I go in, and I can't get in the front door. It's padlocked, so I go around back, and it is, a, it's a junkyard. But there was a gentleman back there, and, I, and he didn't speak English, and I was trying to communicate him, brought him around the front. I said, I need this tire. You have a tire. He had some tires in there. We're looking back and forth, but he and I can't communicate. Finally, a trucker pulls up, and he gets out, and he is from Rancho Cucamonga. He speaks in English, Texas. and he speaks Spanish. And so he, he comes to the window and says to Mama, do you need help? I tried tongues. He just didn't get me. So She, she said, she explained to it. So he begins to interpret with this gentleman. And I said, well, he's got plenty of tires. He said, no, they're not the right size. I said, well, the tire's a tire. Just get me down there. He said, no, it has to be a certain. And I'm like... Oh, come on. I had called around, and I found a tire about 15 miles away in the next little town. They had one tire. So long story short, we give the man some money. He, go, he says, I said, I, I don't know how to get there. And he said, this man will take your tire, take it down there, take your money, come back. And we're like, okay. Now, some people would say, boy, that's being very trustworthy. I'd have given him my house <laughs> to get me off the side of the road and stop having her read that book to me. So we sit there for four hours. Because he had to go that far. And he comes back and he's got the thing and it's all put on. He puts it on and he uh, lowers it down. And we're all said, truck driver went on. He said, I'm going on to, to Dallas and da da da. Pray for me. So said, Joe, pray for him. And uh, I stopped now. The car's ready to go. The 
television station just says, come on in, we'll, we'll put you up till all this clears. Friends now, along the way said, if you can make it this far. All the roads have shut down now. You can't get into Dallas. You can't get to Mississippi. Every road is shut down. You remember that big ice storm back in February? The, you were there. That's what it was. <clears throat> I finally pray. I finally said, Holy Spirit. It's her fault. <laughs> it's your fault. What are we supposed to do? Because I'm missions minded. We're on a journey. We're preaching. We're doing what God's <clears throat> called us to do. But I hadn't prayed. Don't fall to that. And when I prayed as clear as day, Holy Spirit said, go home. Plain as day. We turned up. She said, go, we got to go home. I said, we've driven 1,100 miles. He said, are you sure? I'm like, the Holy Spirit said two words, go home. Now, before we left Arizona, I had a feeling in my stomach, but I didn't pay attention to it about, maybe I wasn't ready to be on programming things and stuff like that. But when the Lord spoke to us, said, go home, we turned around, never had another problem with the car. Where we were heading, the weather cleared up, it's sunny. We're seeing, we're seeing deer, we're seeing antelope, we're seeing whatever elk, and we're, we're just having a wonderful time. And we get home, we've never had another problem with the automobile again. And so, She's sitting there and she's thinking about all of this. And she said, we, we got casual with the presence of God. We got complacent with the Holy Spirit. And we operated in the flesh instead of in the spirit. So he had to give us signs because we weren't listening. What he was trying to do was he was trying to keep us out of that weather, trying to keep us out of that problem, trying to keep us from being stranded. But we just kept going forward. You're going to listen to four voices in this world, your voice, other people's voice, Satan's voice, or God's voice. It just determines, and that will determine how far you can go in life. Because the whole bottom line was, he said, I'm just trying to get you home safely. That's the whole thing he said, I just want to get you home safely. I'm calling you. And so if you're listening to other people's voice about your life, or you're listening to your own voice, or you're listening to the devil's voice, I'm how do you know the difference? You. Because God will Make never, ever home. steer you wrong. He will never convict you. I'm he will never tell you, you no, home. you can't do it. He will never look at your situation or circumstance. He will always you. say, I've got you, you in the palm home. of my hand. And my whole purpose I'm saying of having you on you this journey called life is to get you home. Join hands with somebody this morning. Come home. I'm so thankful for this house that they usher in the presence of the Lord. And as Pastor said, I feel like a water to the top, like a, a waterfall, rain filling this place up. I'm asking you. Well, that's a cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. Home. And he's here today, as the Bible says, to wash you clean, to purify you. If you've been running from the Lord, or you've been listening to the world, or you've been listening to somebody else, or you've even been listening to your own self, I'm calling you. it's time to listen come to the Lord. He's saying, come home. I want to take care of you. I want to protect want you. you too. Come and I don't want you to have the problems that you've had up to this point. But I just want you to turn around. The word turn around in the Bible is used, and it's a word called repent. To repent. Today we have penitentiaries. It comes from the root word repent. To go in and turn your life around and come back out. So it's called repent. If you need your life turned around today to repent. Well, I haven't done anything wrong. Maybe you haven't. Well, I don't think. Listen, thinking you didn't do something wrong is not believing. Thinking is your mind. Knowing is your father. He knows. He doesn't think about you. He knows you. He said, I've known you from the day I counted the hairs on your head. I know you. But do you know me? If you need to know him right now, I'm just going to ask you to do one thing. Maybe you've been running from him. You've never accepted him. Maybe you have, but you've grown cold. Today's your day. If you want me to pray for you to turn around. Get back on the road. 
home. and guarantee that you have a home in eternal life with Christ Jesus. Just take someone's hand and squeeze it right now. The Bible home. says that it's an outward expression of inward change. Peter and John Coming grabbed the beggar's home. life and said, today is not about giving you money. Today is not about seeing you healed. Today is about changing Coming your position home. in life. Today, we're going to change your position in life. Squeeze someone's hand. To Abba, my father. Now, someone squeeze your hand. Do me one favor. Take that hand and just slip it in the air. Because Peter and John took that man's hand and they raised him up. Just slip your hand up with that hand. I see hands everywhere. Home. The reason I do this is because no one knows which person squeezed the other person's hand. And so, therefore, Coming I take home. away all guilt, all shame, Coming home. all doubt all condemnation and this is a visual experience to you right now of what God sees you he says I take away all guilt all shame all condemnation I just see a bunch of people with a hand lifted to heaven if you didn't squeeze someone's hand but you want to be included in this just slip it up right now I want to see it all right those of you that have your hands up may slip them back down now I'm just going to ask right now you already made the first step you moved your hand up the second step is the profession of your faith or a declaration of your faith. It's just saying, Lord, change me. So we're going to do that by prayer. Let's just pray a prayer together. I'm going to ask everyone, raise your hands or not, just to repeat this prayer. Heavenly Father, today, by an unction of the Holy Spirit, my life is going to be changed. I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That I'm back on the road. I'm back on the road of righteousness. Of righteousness. And I have an eternal home. I have eternal home with Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. If you believe that with all your heart, your mind, your soul, we seal it with. Amen and amen. I believe we're in a time and season where we must draw closer to Holy Spirit until Jesus comes. I felt compelled to write this new comprehensive book on Holy Spirit. You can get your copy, whether in ebook or regular book, from our website, SalemFamilyMinistries.org, or you can order from Amazon. I believe it is filled with revelation for you in these last days and will be a wonderful companion book for you to study along with your Bible each day. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome.